good morning guys and we're back again so in this set of videos well i don't know if you already saw my previous one but i already tackled question one to five which is the business which is based on the business mock exam for bsc undergraduate maths specifically business maths and in this video we'll be looking to do question six to question 11 just to tackle these crazy problems yeah so just stick with me and this should be fine for people not doing this mock and just um, external sources well kick back relax get some popcorn and we'll start tackling doing some basic math okay let's do this so let's start question six and then we'll be doing a few more yeah don't mind that <laughs> the phone kind of dropped between the sticks i'm using sticks instead of an actual tripod because my tripod kind of broke yeah <laughs> all right so let's do this number six so the question states 84 pounds as a percentage of 350 is dollar dollar this is quite straightforward what is saying that the total amount is 350 and we want 84 pounds of it so in other words it's always going to be an amount a basic amount initial the amount you you're interested in over the total amount okay hold on to this so we could so here we could say we want 84 out of 350 pounds and to simply convert to percentage, or you know, just times it by 100. And that's your answer. Just smash down the calculator exactly how it is. So 84 over 350 times 100 is 24%. And that's it. Pretty damn easy. Now let's move on to question right, guys, seven. Here we are question seven. So just by looking at this, we can tell this is a very mathematical question, unlike the previous six we've been doing. For mathematicians out there, this will be dead easy. For non-mathematicians or people that want to get this right, you just gotta follow, you just gotta obey the, the rule up there. So let's follow this. For x greater than one, so in other words, for numbers like 1.1, 2, 3, so on, any number that's bigger than one. So write the following in ascending order. To tell you the truth, I know it looks quite messy, but because they instantly told you for x greater than one. All you really got to do is select numbers that are bigger than one, any number, one fixed number, and work with it. In other words, let's try the number 2, okay? X is big, 2 is bigger than 1, so suppose X equals 2. Now, if I were to just replace 2 with all of these powers, so these are powers, power 0, power 2, power just no power, and so on, we would get a fun result. So this is just a matter of just putting this in the calculator and just hoping you get some decent values. So... In the calculator, 2 to the power 0, well, in general terms, anything to the power 0 is 1. Next one, 2 to the power 2, so 2 squared, we should know is 4. You can just use your calculator, guys. X is 2, so 2 is just 2. Is for 4, but in decimals, 0.25 so so far that's the smallest and the last one 2 to the power half is actually the same as saying the square root 2 and this in you know real numbers is 1.414 so there we have it putting this in ascending order is obvious we can see that this is the smallest so we can say in ascending order In ascending order, we have this value first, so x power minus half, x power minus 2, sorry. Next one would be the term to the power 0, so x to the power 0. Then x to the power half. Then x, which is x power 1, then x squared. To make things more obvious, just look at the powers and put that in ascending order. So minus 2, then 0, then half. Imagine it's a 1, then 2. So in ascending orders of powers, that is the easiest way to solve this. So rewrite this in ascending powers, ascending order of power. So this would be fir first, second, first, second, third, or fifth. That's it. That's all it is. So let's move on to number 8. Alright guys, so here we are. Question 8. Now the question tells us that the price of a car increased by 6% to $9,116. This is US dollars, okay, in pounds. Now, 
the price of the car before the increase was and this is the amount we need to find so it's quite straightforward there we just need to calculate what the price was before increase now when you look at this the best way to understand this is to interpret this in algebra format when i say algebra it's to write an equation that directly explains this so let's suppose we let p be the price of a car okay so just say let p be the price of the car before the increase okay so in other words this is the final amount but p is the price before it so we can instantly say so therefore this three dots means therefore we know that initial price p was multiplied by so when, we, when you increase something you have to multiply by some factor we know increase by six percent we know the original amount is equivalent to 100%. So to increase it, we think of it as 100% plus 6%. 106%. So increase by 106%. And this told us that when you more, when you increase the, the price before the increase by 106%, you get this amount, which is 9,116. And there you have it. And this amount, well, if you don't like the right percent, it's also the same as 1.06. So basically, we have the price times 1.06 equals this amount. And using our algebra, we have to isolate P. To do this, we have to throw these guys onto the other side. So think about it. P times this amount equals this value. To move this to the other side, we have to find opposite of times, which is divide. So instead of P times 1.06, to do another side, it'll be 9116 divided by 1.06. So we should have P equals the same figure but flipping using algebra 1.06 and this in the calculus should give us the answer let's check it out so 9116 divided by 1.06 gives us and that's it gives us eight thousand six hundred dollars and that's it that was the price of the car before the increase good now the next question will be very similar, so let's try and tackle this one. I'm trying to do it before. Okay, I do. here we are, question nine. So just like the other one, in a sale, the price of a freezer is reduced by 12%. So again, like the other question, we increase the price of the car by 6%. So we kind of concluded that the original is always going to be 100, and we add six to increase. Notice the keyword reduce. So we're gonna we're not gonna increase it, we're gonna decrease it. So actually, it's gonna be 100%. The original price decreased by 12%. Knowing in our calculator, so let's just get this key information before we start. The decrease, the scale factor will be 100 minus 12%. In the calculator or in our mental mass, this will give us 88% or 0 0.88. So this will be the amount we have to multiply P by to get a certain price. So the next information tells us that the sale price is $220. The price of the freezer before the sale was, and this is what we have to find. So let's breast back it up a bit. So again, we could say, we could just identify this as an algebraic expression. So we know that the price of freeze is reduced by 12%. In other words, letting P be the price of the freeze before the sale, we could say that P times the, the, the sale scale factor, which was reduced by 12%, which is 88, so 0 0.88, equaled the sale price, which was 220 and that's it just like the other expression instead of dividing by 1.06 we're going to divide it by 0 0.88 so therefore p equals 220 the opposite of this term is 0 0.88 and this is it literally this is it so if you get a question like this always think about first information which is whether you're going to add or subtract from the 100 Reduce, clearly you're going to subtract. Increase, you're going to add. And you just stick this in next to the amount you want to multiply, which will give you the final result. Do some algebra. That's it. So now, dividing this using the calculator, let's just do this. We get $250. So the original price before the sale was actually $250. So the guy saved $30. That's it. Easy, isn't it? Let's move on to number nine, number okay, 10. Okay, here we are. Question 10 now. So, 
The question then states that a car at line autos is worth $9,000 including the extras. So this one includes the extra amounts. But with a special offer of one fifth of this price. Okay. Now the same car Tiger Motors is sold for $6,000 plus an extra one quarter added to this price. Now which is cheaper? So we can see in that there's two parts to this question. The first part are Lion Autos and the second part are Tiger Motors. Now for Lion Autos, we know initially that the car is worth 9000 So let's call this Lion Autos. We know that the car is worth 9000 and but well, we want a special offer of one fifth of this price. So in other words, we want a minus one fifth we need to know what does this means one fifth or nine thousand mathematically speaking when you have an amount a fraction of a certain amount we simply multiply so off in general terms so yeah off in general terms means to multiply so if i just rub this out and just replace it with a time sign we have our expression so realistically we need to evaluate this and evaluate this well, in the scientific calculator, you can do this all at once. So let's just type it as it is. So we have 9,000 minus 1 fifth times 9,000. So that's exactly what we want. And this gives us the total price for a line auto car at 7,200. Repeating the same technique for the second one, writing 6,000 plus 1 quarter of 1 quarter times 6,000. We actually get 7,500. And there you have it. Which is cheaper, clearly, the car at line autos. That's it. And that's the end of it. So we just have to, again, interpret this in these type of equations. You can't expect them to be the same because you've got two pieces of information with relatively the same description. One's a negative, one's a minus, one's subtracting an amount, one's adding an amount. But yeah, this seems it, and let's move on to the final question before the end of this video. Thanks. Okay, and our last question in the video. Question 11. So this, to some people, would be the easiest question, or to others, this would be incredibly impossible. And it, depending on your level of skill in manipulating algebraic expression. So let's, let's have a look at it. Firstly, question 11. We want to rearrange the following formula by making u the subject. The equation is uv equals fu, oh, that's a great choice, plus fv. So what's this telling us? This tells us that making u subject, this implies that we want an equation that looks like this, u equals some other terms, okay? In other words, we want to isolate u. From this equation, we can see there's two places where u is. Okay, so to isolate this, we would need to, firstly, put all the u's on the left-hand side. Everything that's attached to u, bring it with them. So Look at this equation, let's rewrite this here. So uv equals fu plus fv. We could subtract fu across. So then the all the u's on the left hand side. So here we could say subtract fu. So then we're gonna have uv minus fu equals this is gone. Fv. I'll try to match the equal sign from now on. Now, this is another technique we need to understand. We have two u's in the same place, but to isolate, to, to take the common factor, we need to do a method that uses, that's called factorizing. So we need to factorize the u term to isolate it from the v and the f. So taking u from both sides, we know that they both have a u, so we can do that. We can make a bracket. And inside a bracket, we need something that more plus get v. So in other words, we take the u out, we left the v. We take the u out here, we left the f. So u bracket v minus f. Right hand side remains the same. Now, the final step here, how to get u on its own. First things first, when this is written like this, this means that u is multiplied to 
v minus f. Now, just like we did for the previous questions, to get rid of the to, to do the inverse of the multiplication, we need to divide by the, the amount here. So instead of times v minus f, we're gonna have to do divide by v minus f. Okay? Trust me, this does make sense. Now, doing that tells us that we're gonna have u equals fv. Instead of writing divide here, I like to make it look like a fraction. V minus f. And that's it. This is all. This is what happens when you isolate u and uh, when you have an equation in terms of f u and f v, you get this. But, but what advice guys, you really need to work on your algebra. If you can't really follow the steps, I recommend doing tons of algebra uh, practice just to get this done. And anyways, but that's it. Hope this helps and look forward to my next video which I'll post very soon. Take care.